I wanted to do a story about home birth because my friend Catherine is about to have her first child and her and her husband Todd decided to have their child at home. I am the exact same age as Catherine. Then I'm kind of thinking, well, pretty soon I'm going to be having kids too. And is this something that I would want to do as well? Todd and I grow vegetables for a living. We have one acre under production and we grow all different kinds of vegetables, flowers, herbs, eggs, and we sell through farmers markets and through a CSA. We decided to give birth in our own house, which means we're going to have a midwife come and she has two assistants, they're apprentice midwives, they're going to be here as well. We're going to call them when I go into labor and they're going to come here and help me give birth. So they don't really do a lot of intervening, they're very hands off, it's more like making sure everything's going okay and letting me do most of the work. It'll happen in the bedroom, so we should start there, <laughs> theoretically. This is the birth, birth pool. tub. And it actually has a plastic liner that goes down inside of it that has heating pads that go on the outside rim. You know, this is basically for comfort. Everyone we've talked to that has used a birthing pool says this will be your best friend when you're in labor. But they do, they call it the midwives epidural. Because hmm. when you get, it just really relieves contractions and... But I'm ready to go. I can have this thing filled up in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I got my hose all ready. The baby is born with mechanisms that keep it from inhaling. Um, so it can actually stay in the water for a couple minutes. But you can, if everything's going well, you can just have the baby in the water and then bring it out and hold it. And They come out a lot cleaner that way. Too. Yeah. <laughs> and then wait for the placenta. But we're going to set up our bed with like... Um, a uh, shower curtain liner and old sheets and put plastic bags on the pillows and, you know, use old pillowcases. And that way I can be on the bed if I want to be. Um, I can be walking around here. I can labor on the toilet. I can do... The floor. Yeah, I mean, I can squat on the floor. I can do whatever I need to do. So she gives you a binder and it has all kinds of information about, like, what to do while you're pregnant, what to eat, um, uh, supplements you can take, pregnancy tea. And part of it is um, putting a birth kit together. These are actual like medical supplies that Peggy gave us a list of things. There's like cord clamps in here, sterile gloves, peri bottles, perennial cold compress. This is going to be super fun. So there's some ammonia in here for, you know, cleaning or sterilizing anything that needs it. Witch hazel, again, for after the birth because it's supposed to be very soothing because you kind of get all stretched out. Ziploc bags for the placenta. Honey is also very soothing for after the birth. Jolly Ranchers to suck on while I'm in labor, so I have like some sugar. Um, hydrogen peroxide, trash bags, more garbage bags and shower curtain liner, alcohol, cookie sheet for Peggy supplies. And she's a certified, I mean, this isn't just she's like a, some... She's a certified professional midwife. So it means like there's a certain number of hours that you have to have like attended births, classes you have to take and certification to keep up. You have to know certain medical procedures. If anything is wrong with the baby after it's born, we can go to the hospital. Today we are going to talk to Becca, who is also a video blogger, but she's a nurse in New York City. I work on the labor and delivery unit of a large uh, urban hospital. So we do about 560 deliveries a month. Is there a view of home birthing that's, I, I don't know, either negative or positive in your oh. <laughs> profession? Sure. That's like the most hotly contested <laughs> birthing issue. Any You get a bunch of labor and delivery nurses in a room and there's going to be a fight. Most of the friends that I have who do labor and delivery do feel that there is a place for for home births and for birthing center type births, be it in a hospital birthing center or out. There's tons of statistics on both sides saying that it's super, super safe or that it's completely, completely deadly. I mean, it just depends on who you ask. It's true it's not for everyone, but there's lots of people in the population for whom that isn't a perfectly safe, viable choice, as long as it's attended by a, a licensed professional, or two, preferably, and as long as there's transport to a hospital nearby, or reasonably nearby. My name's Amy Fairman, and I'm a student midwife, and I'm training to become a certified professional midwife. My belief is that for healthy, low-risk women, 
that they're um, actually more safe at home because they're more likely to have a physiologic birth. There are so many forces against women in the hospital, so many things that interfere with um, you know, the flow of labor, being confined to a bed, um, you know, not having the safe, intimate feeling emotionally that you have when you're in your own space. Our bodies were created to give birth and, um, you know, it's very, very difficult to have a natural birth in the hospital. Uh, I don't mean just not medicated, but I mean natural in the sense that this is the way that it was meant to happen. Hospitals are for sick people. I mean, hospitals are for sick people, and by and large, pregnant women are not sick people. I mean, they're, they're having babies. Like, it's not necessarily a medical condition. There's no real reason for a medical doctor to attend a low-risk delivery. The C-section rate in this country right now is like 32 percent um, and the World Health Organization says that it should be like 5 to 10. It's really obscene right now. There's no excuse for us to have such a high cesarean rate. They'll say that you're not progressing fast enough so they want to like induce labor and they'll give you Pitocin and Pitocin creates really hard and painful contractions and then the mother automatically is like I'm in so much pain I need an epidural. If you're being induced, your baby's not ready to be born. And the problem is when your baby's not ready to be born and you try to begin labor, it doesn't work a lot of the time. Lots of interventions necessitate other interventions and the kind of stuff you wouldn't get at home to speed up the labor or uh, really strong pain meds that slow everything down so we have to add more to speed it up, you know, and then you're sort of stuck in a bed and tied to these machines and all this stuff sort of snowballs. You know, there's going to be all of these balls that have started rolling and everybody's going to be pretty invested in the idea that you're going to have your baby in the next 24 hours or so. So when it doesn't work, then um, there's always a cesarean. It's about people coming into a hospital and they better have a baby in 24 hours. Right. And 24 hours is not necessarily the right amount of time for everybody. No, my um, midwife told me to expect 36 hours at least. If I could give one piece of advice to anyone having a baby in a hospital, it'd be to wait as long as you can before you go. Yeah. Because you get, put on that, you get put on that clock. We are like a lifeguard that we're monitoring the situation and we're looking always for any sign that something is requiring us to do something or to seek other care. It's a very, very, very small percentage of transports from home that are an actual emergency situation, like an umbilical cord prolapse. That would be a reason to go right away as quickly as possible to the hospital and for the mom to have a cesarean. And, you know, that's why we're so glad that the obstetric surgeons are there and that they have this wonderful training to do this when an emergency is really happening. I mean, we're personally involved with the people that are going to be here. Um, one of the women that's going to be here actually requested to be here because she just gets along with us so well. And that makes you feel comfortable with the people attending you and you feel like you can, you know, be naked or like move in a certain position and you don't feel like judge. I don't know, it's just more comfortable to have people around you that you know. We are about to go talk to Rupert and Kate who live in Canada. They just had a home birth. Are you going to labor here? All of it's all of it going to be in this room. Yeah, we're going to, this is an area to um, just hang out in, in the early stages. So I thought it would be interesting to have Catherine and Todd sit down and have a video chat with them and sort of talk about expectations. I was at home, I felt safe. It felt to me that I was giving myself the best possible chance to have the labor that I was going to have sort of thing. And did you have uh, water births for both of your births or just one? I did, yeah, for both of them. I'd spoken to a lot of people who just said water was a fantastic pain, pain relief. Part of the thing about labor is that ability to keep moving and keep keep going with it and not get stuck. You need to kind of move around because that helps it, I think. When it happened, I was just amazed at how silent it, it all was. You know, this baby, you're so used to those kind of TV images of a baby coming out and screaming its head off and right. it, under bright lights and get, getting whisked away from the mother. And it was so different to that. It was, you know, it was just like this baby came out 
and she hardly cried. She just gradually learnt to breathe. Well, right at the end, she, when the baby was just uh, uh, about to be born, she said, do you want to catch it? And, uh, and I think, you know, if I hadn't been in a very comfortable, confident state of mind, I would have just gone, what? No! You did, um, I think. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I caught Amy as she was born, and yeah, it was amazing. Um, I mean, you know, life, lifetime experience, really fantastic. I mean, emotionally, it's quite a, an amazing thing to be here in this room here and know that this little baby was born there, you know. Yeah. And you get to sleep in your own bed afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You take it the whole thing. You just, yeah. <laughs> well, this could be the morning. <laughs> contractions have started. Eight o'clock right now. And I've been having contractions since about five. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, baby. <laughs> it's hard to say like what would have happened in a hospital, but my labor was 13 hours and I think it could have gone on a lot longer if I had been in a hospital and if I hadn't been comfortable, especially like the pushing part because that was like two hours and, and that's, that's not like fast, but it's a good amount of time and like I think I would have felt a lot less comfortable and had less encouragement and probably had a lot of people saying, you know, like, do you want an epidural? And Like once everything was done and set up, they were pretty much out in the kitchen like talking and drinking tea, like they let me do what I needed to do and they would just walk back every once in a while and check on me. Oh, I'm having a contraction though. These oh. assistants are here. Mm. Kitty's sitting with mommy. Oh. Pool is still filling up. They were totally on top of everything, always checking his heart rate. Yeah, I mean, I could do whatever I wanted and they were just there to make sure everything was going okay. We were sitting there in between contractions laughing and joking about things. Well, this might just be the easiest birth ever. Oh my god, I don't know about So, that. how far along is she? She's six to seven centimeters already. And look at her, <laughs> smiling. Yeah, I'm about to yeah. have another contraction though. <laughs> the chickens came up to the, the back yeah. porch and were looking in the window. The cats were standing up on the edge of the tub looking in. So you'd never get this in a hospital. No. All hospitals should have cats. <laughs> like I would say the contractions earlier in the day were they would just sort of come and go and I would moan through them and that felt really good and I would like I really wanted to be on all fours and sort of like rocking back and forth. Oh. It wasn't until Catherine actually started to feel the urge to push that she ever really showed that she was in any pain. Yeah, like the last hour I was definitely like in excruciating pain every time I had to push. Catherine has gotten into the pool. She's almost fully dilated. I think she's a trooper and I think she's going to make it through it just fine. They were so encouraging. Like when I when I felt like I couldn't do it anymore, they were just like, yes, you can. Yes, like, you can. Every time I was going through a contraction and pushing, they were like, good, really good, really good. And they they let me see what was happening. They had a flashlight and a mirror underwater so I could see what was happening. I could see that I was, that I was making progress. But it was really cool. He was born underwater. He came out and they put him on my chest and we let the cord stop pulsing and then we cut it and then I got out and they had to fix me up a little bit because I was really cold and shaky. But... They know what they're doing. They were just excellent. Yeah. I need to cry. 
<laughs> what are you doing? I, I think the overall message that I feel like I would want to tell other women is that it's not easier to have a home birth. It's still painful. It's still hard. You're still working. But you're just in this really supportive environment that you've created. It's more and, manageable. Right. And, and and you can make it whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing. Like, nobody's pressuring you. Nobody's bullying you. You get to make decisions about how your baby's born, how you labor, mm -hmm. what they do to your baby afterwards. You're in total control. And it just takes... For me, like, I never, like, the main thing was I never felt afraid. I never, ever once felt afraid, no matter how mm -hmm. painful it got. I just felt like everything was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think it could have been any better. No, I think it was perfect. Mm -hmm. And he's so awesome. He's so, yeah. like, <laughs> pretty, and he has all his fingers and toes. It was nice. It was really, it was just a nice surprise to have this perfect baby come out. We believe that life arose spontaneously on the earth. So it must be possible for life to appear on other suitable planets. Of which there seem to be a large number in the galaxy. But we don't know how life first appeared. <laughs>